Hello everyone, my name is Emil, welcome to my channel and to the first ever feature highlight. Today I'll be making a hexagon grid for my new game, which currently has the development name Tribes. It's gonna be a mobile strategy game that uses procedural generation, and this hex grid will be the first feature we're adding to it. Before we get to coding, I of course need to make a new project and choose an engine for our game. Usually I prefer to make games in Unreal Engine, but recently I want to get more into making mobile games as well. And let's be honest, having Unreal power your small mobile game is like having a personal nuclear power plant to charge your phone, so I think I'm gonna give the dreaded Unity a go instead. Which I've heard does mobile pretty well, so that's great. So let's make a new project, call it Tribes, and don't forget to create the Git repository. And here we are! I've used Unity a bit for school and stuff before, so I kinda know my way around the engine. But if any of you have any tips or tricks, please leave your precious guidance in the comment section. Let's get started with the hexagon grid. This will act as the terrain we play on, and as I said earlier, it will be procedural, so for every new game there will be a new variation of the terrain. Now, to make a grid of hexagons, we of course need a hexagon. So I opened Blender and modeled a quick hexagon tile, which I could put into Unity. Now, I could go around placing these hexagons randomly around a scene and call it a terrain, but this, one, would be extremely time-consuming, and two, not allow for the infinite variation of proceduralism. So, I will have to come up with a way to place all my tiles through code. And a hexagon grid is pretty similar to a regular grid of squares, so let's just code that real quick first. A simple two-dimensional for loop that makes the coordinate of each tile in the grid, and then we instantiate a hexagon tile at this coordinate. And here we are. The tiles are overlapping right now, so let's just increase the tile size a bit. And there we go, that's a lot better. Now this way of making a grid would be perfect if we were using squares, as you can see here. However, since we are using hexagons instead, we have to make some adjustments to the coordinates. And our adjustments will look like this. We will push every other column up or down by exactly one half of a tile size, as you can see here. Now this leaves this gap between the columns, and we can fix this by adjusting the X position as well, by pushing them towards each other like this. And by making those two small adjustments to the coordinates, we have now turned our square grid into a perfect grid for hexagons. Boom. So let's do exactly that, but in code instead. So let's make a function that does that in our code. We'll call it get hex chords. And let's adjust the X position first. And the amount we need to adjust it by is the tile size times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then the set position, which is a bit easier. We just need to check if the set position can be divided by two. And if it can, we will offset it by a half a tile size. And if it's not, then we won't offset it at all. This will make the effect that every other column is offset, as you can see here. All right, so let's apply that function to our coordinate in our for loop. And here is the result, cool. Now, to make this flat land a bit more exciting, I can add some areas with water. And to achieve this procedurally, we can use noise. Unity has a built-in pearly noise function that we can use to generate smooth values between 0 and 1. And by using these values, we can determine where to put grass, water, trees, and so on. Let's visualize it. This square has a pearly noise texture applied to it. And as you can see, it generates all these pixels with values between 0 and 1 where the closer the value is to zero, the darker the pixel is, and zero is completely black. One is white, so the closer the value is to one, the brighter it is. We can also adjust the scale of the pearly noise. We can use this to determine where to put water by adding a threshold to it, where all the values below our threshold are black, and all the values above are white. Or in our case, below the threshold is water tiles, and above the threshold is grass tiles. So, by adjusting the scale and the threshold, we can adjust how much water we want in our map. Let's add this noise value to our map generation script. And for now, we can just tell it to only generate the tile if the noise value is above our noise threshold. And there we go, awesome, we got water. And while we're at it, let's add some simple trees as well. For this, we'll have to make a variant of our grass tile and add some trees to it. I made a quick model of some trees in Blender and added it to the prefab variant. And in our code, we'll need a reference to the trees prefab. And when we have that, we can simply add another threshold for our noise, but this time for the trees. And if our noise value is above this trees threshold, we add a trees tile there instead of grass. 
beautiful. Since we're using pearly noise, we can easily get infinite variation in our map. To achieve this, we can simply add an offset to our pearly noise. This will just move the pearly noise to another location. And if we select this offset randomly, we get a completely new noise map every time. So let's add some variables for the offset and a function that makes a random offset every time we start our game. And here it is. Every time I click play, we get a new map. Magic. Now, these tiles will act as a foundation for our entire game, so we need a way to interact with them and do an action such as collecting wood from the forest or build something on the tile. And a simple way of doing separate actions based on what tile we click are interfaces. We simply make a class for our interfaces with a function called, for example, onClick, and then every script that inherits from this interface can implement its own logic for this function, meaning that we can simply call the onClick function on the interface and have the item we click determine what happens when it's clicked. So let's make a script for our tiles and have it implement the interface we just made. Now Ryder is telling me that we need to implement the onClick function, so let's do that. And for now, let's just make it print out the name of the tile we clicked. I'll also make a simple animation for when we click a tile. That's better. And just to make it super clear what tile we have selected, let's add a simple graphic to our tile that we can enable when the tile is selected and disable when it's deselected. I'll add the deselect function in the same interface as the onclick function to keep all the interaction functions in the same place. Now, when we click a new tile, it will be selected and the previous tile will be deselected. Cool. The last thing we need for our hex grid is the possibility to replace tiles for when we are building something on the tile or need to change it for whatever reason. To test replacing tile, I made this simple campsite in Blender and made a new tile variant with the new mesh. And to make the campsite come alive, I also added this simple fire particle effect to the campfire. Mmm, looks cozy. And now I want marshmallows. I want to be able to replace the tile we have selected with this new campsite. The function is very simple, it just instantiates the new tile at the old tiles transform and then it destroys the old tile. Let's make a simple UI with a button that calls this function and voila, we can now place campsites everywhere and try to start forest fires. So that's the hexagon grid for my upcoming mobile game. I really hope you enjoyed and please leave a comment if you have any recommendations for improvements I can make. As I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty new to Unity, so any tips or tricks are greatly appreciated. And to stay up to date with the development of this game, be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, a like would bring a big smile to my face. Thanks a lot. Catch you later.